Hi there, my name is Shelley. In our first lesson, we dealt with factorization. In this lesson, we are going to link what we have been learning to division in order to help us simplify fractions. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to factorize using a common factor. Let's start by going through some examples of division together. As in the previous lesson, we are going to be using our knowledge of the area of a rectangle as a useful tool to help us. Here's the first example of division. The area of a rectangle is 63 centimeters squared. One side is 9 centimeters long. What is the length of the other side? Well, because we know that the area of a rectangle is the product of the two sides, if we do the opposite and divide the area by the known side, we will get the length of the unknown side. So let's divide our area, which is 63, by our side, which is 9. Now we all should know that 63 is 9 times 7, and all of this is divided by 9. And we should see that our answer is 7. So this means that our side is going to be 7 centimeters. Now let's move on. Do you still remember what it means to cancel fractions? What it means is that the numerator and the denominator are divided by the same number. Let's practice this in our next example. Here we are working algebraically. The area of a rectangle is AB. The one side is A. What is the length of the other side? As we did before, to get the length of the unknown side, we have to divide the area by the known side. So, we divide AB divided by A. Now, what are the factors of our product AB? They are A and B. So we can write that as A times B divided by A. Now, if we think about it, this, another way of writing it is a divided by a times b divided by 1. And we should be able to see that the a's would cancel out, and we are going to be left with a 1 times b, which gives us b. Here, we have done the exact same thing as what we did with the numbers. We have cancelled the common factors. Remember, cancel means divide. Remember, you can only cancel or divide a fraction if you have factors. What we have been doing here is simplifying algebraic fractions. Let's try a few more. Remember, we can only cancel if we have factors. Here we go. Simplify ABC divided by AC. Do you have the answer? Let's see. AC is the common factor in the numerator and the denominator. That means we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by AC. So let's do it. Another way of writing this is AC divided by AC times B over 1. And we should notice that the ACs cancel out and we are left with 1 multiplied by B which gives us B. Are you ready now for number two? Simplify a plus b divided by a. Now, be careful here. Let's take a look at the answer. The answer is a plus b divided by a. This cannot be simplified. Why can we not simplify this fraction? We do not have factors to cancel. a and b are terms and not factors. Remember, in an expression, terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign. In our previous example, we could cancel because we had factors and not terms. There are no pluses or minus signs in between them. Here comes number three. 
Simplify a plus ab divided by a. Did you say the answer is ab? Did you immediately try to cancel these a's? No, 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 you can't do this. Let's take a look at why. They are not factors, they are terms. They are separated by a plus sign. In order to cancel the factors, we need to factorize our numerator first. So let's look at the correct way to simplify this fraction. Firstly, we factorize the numerator by taking out the common factor, which is a. Now, a into a, we are left with 1, plus a divided into ab, we are left with b. And this is all divided by a. Now, another way to write this is a divided by a times by 1 plus b divided by 1. And what we should notice is that the a's cancel out, and we are left with 1 times by 1 plus b. And this can be written as 1 plus b, which is the simplest form of the fraction. Now let's recap what we've been doing in this lesson by playing a game. It's just to test to see whether you can recognize factors. What I'm going to do is give you an algebraic fraction and you need to decide whether you can cancel. In other words, whether we can simplify this fraction. Now you need to be ready because you need to give me the answer before I give you the answer. Here is number one. Can we simplify this fraction? Well, what did you say? Yes or no? Let's go and take a look. Yes, we can simplify this fraction. We can factorize both the numerator and the denominator and then cancel the common factors. What are the factors of 16? Well, there are a number of options, but we are going to choose 8 multiplied by 2. And then we still have our x, y, z. We say 16 factorized is 8 times 2. And then the denominator, what are the factors of 24? Once again, there are a number of options, but we are going to choose 8 times 3. And then our x squared is really x times x, and we have our y. Now we can cancel out the 8s, we can cancel out one of the x's, and we can cancel out the y's. And so what are we left with? We are left with 2z divided by 3x. And this is the simplified form. Now, do you remember what we call these fractions? This fraction and this simplified form of the fraction are called equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same value but are written in a different form. Now let's do example number three. Can this be simplified? What did you decide about this one? Look at it carefully again. No, this fraction cannot be simplified. Why not? The numerator consists of terms. 2 and a, and not factors, and we can only cancel factors. Remember, terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign, and in this case, the terms are separated by a plus sign, and only the denominator consists of factors, 2 and a. This fraction cannot be simplified. Now let's move on to number 4. Can this fraction be simplified? What do you think? Are you ready for the answer? Yes, this one can be simplified. In this fraction, we can factorize the numerator first. The factors are a and then 2 plus b. And it's all divided by our factors 2a. Now, another way to write this is a divided by a multiplied by 2 plus b divided by 2. 
and what we notice is the A's cancel out and we are left with 1 times this, which is really 2 plus B over or divided by 2. This is the simplified form. Now let's do the last one. Can you simplify this fraction? Well, these are all terms. Can you see they are separated by plus signs? But the numerator can be factorized. So, yes, we can simplify this fraction. Let's do it. We factorize the numerator into a multiplied by a plus b. And all this is divided by a plus b. Now notice I placed the terms in the denominator in brackets so that the two terms together make one factor. So in the numerator we have the factors a and a plus b and in the denominator we have the factor a plus b. Now we can rewrite this as a divided by 1 multiplied by a plus b divided by a plus b. And notice the a plus b's cancel out and we are going to be left with a divided by 1 multiplied by 1 over 1 which would give us a. So we have simplified the fraction. Well that's all for this lesson. Can you see how important it is to be able to factorize in order to simplify fractions? Here's a few for you to do on your own. Simplify the following fraction. 18x squared y divided by 27xy cubed. What we've been doing so far in our lessons is to use the common factor to factorize. But there are other ways to factorize as well. And we're going to be doing these in the coming lessons.